Um, back in March, my vocational rehab counselor and I made the decision for me to uh, go to a program called the Colorado Center for the Blind. I um, really didn't need to do anything. It was my, my vocational rehab counselor had to fill out the um, paperwork and get everything approved and all that. And um, almost right away, she was like, yeah, you're approved, you're going. So it was, yes, I'm going. Um, it meant a few months away from my family and I knew about this program years ago. I had heard of it, but I really had been looking at it a lot last spring and, um, I just thought, man, I don't want to be gone. I don't want to be away from my family. And I got to this point where I just felt like I had enough skills to get myself in trouble, but not enough skills to get myself out of it. So I'd get on the computer and get to doing something, but I couldn't figure out certain things. And I, I, you know, all these skills that I felt like I had before and I had a good handle on, I was always techie. People always came to me like, what's happening with my computer? I was always fixing stuff and I was always able to figure something out. And I was, you know, I would make the flyers and I would do all of that stuff. And I knew that I could do all that stuff again if I had the right skills. So I had enough skills to start getting back into using the computer again, but not enough to really know what I was doing and feel comfortable doing it. So um, that was that's a big part of why I decided to go to this program. That and my orientation and mobility skills using the white cane. I've had quite a bit of training, but I have no experience. The pandemic this whole last year really hampered the efforts to just get out and get comfortable with getting out on my own. And the um, other skills that I'd, I'll be learning are Braille and home management. And home management just covers everything in the kitchen, everything in the home, um, all kinds of stuff like um, taking care of your finances on your own. You know, I had done that for a family for the last few years before I lost the last of my vision, but all of a sudden I couldn't see the print on the page anymore. And Dan took over and he does a great job. Um, but he has a lot on his plate. So I, that's why I had taken over, taken it over initially. And I want to be able to do that again. Um, so that's one of the skills that I'll be learning here, but we have a lot of extracurricular activities in interwoven and all the other classes. So I'll be doing art and wood shop. I, I'm actually going to learn how to use power tools, which I never really cared about using before. And I really don't care now whether I ever get to or not, but I know that if I can do it, I can do anything. If I can use power tools, totally blind, like what can I not do? Right? So I'm super excited about going and learning all of these things. So Wednesday morning, when I was on this video yesterday morning, I was driving to the airport. Well, I wasn't driving. Dan won't let me drive. How rude is that? I was on my way to the airport. Dan was taking me to the airport to fly out to Colorado. He's coming to see me in two weeks, and I'm hoping to be able to come back home um, a few weeks after that, and you know, we'll kind of go back and forth as much as we can, um, but I really am here to learn. I'm really here to learn how to be um, an independent, confident blind woman so that I can do all that God has called me to do. You know, this journey that I'm on, he has a purpose. He has a purpose for it. And I know, I know that he heals and I know that he will someday, but I also know that he has a purpose. And I have had the opportunity, the pleasure of connecting with dozens of people in Tennessee who are blind. And really without the Lord, People are devastated by what they see as a tragedy. I don't see this as a tragedy. I feel like losing my sight has been a growth experience. Uh, it has built my character. It's made me a stronger person. It's made me a uh, more compassionate person. And not only that, it's made my kids more compassionate people. They love people and they love to help people and they are understanding and compassionate with other people. And I so appreciate that um, because they've had to do it for me and it's just come naturally to them because I'm their mother. And so now that's transferring to the people around them and I love watching them be a blessing and, and be a help to those around them. I also am able to experience life in a completely different way than anybody else. Um,
for example, I can go to the beach and I used to, when, you know, we visited uh, North Carolina and South Carolina um, last year. We went to the beach and I was just on the verge of, of losing the last of my vision. And so I tried to look around. I tried to see what I could see, but I couldn't really see much. And so I focused on the experience, the feelings, the smells, uh, the wind in my hair. I know it sounds a little cliche, the wind in my hair, the sun on my face, but really it was like that. And I actually got to experience all those things. And so I remember, I remember the feel of the sand. I remember the feel of the warmth of the sun, but the cold of the wind at the same time and the sound of the, the surf hitting the beach and the sound of my kids playing around and, you know, Lorenzo trying to throw somebody in and thankfully he didn't that day. It was pretty cold. Um, but I got to experience it with my other senses, you know, the taste of the salt on your lips. It was just an amazing thing to be able to really think about those things when I couldn't see them because everything is so visual. We take everything in visually and we don't slow down to use our other senses to experience everything. And so it's been a great experience for me having to do that. I've had to do it in, in many different scenarios, really experience things using all those other senses that God gave us to use. And when we have this wonderful thing called sight, we tend to ignore what we can hear and what we can uh, smell and what we feel and, and what we taste and I don't want to ignore that anymore. I've ignored it for so long. And now that I've kind of been awakened to it, it's been an amazing experience. So I encourage you, the next time you're out and about doing something, experiencing something, just sit for a minute and close your eyes and think, what does this experience feel like? What does it sound like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? And really feel those things. Really take it in in a whole new experience, I guarantee you, you're going to feel like your experience was more rich and more exciting. And you're going to feel things and, and smell things and see things that you didn't really, uh, or not see, but if, cause your eyes are closed, but you're going to feel and, and hear and experience things that you wouldn't have noticed before. Um, because there's so much visual going on. So I just encourage you to do that. Just fun little experiment. If you do, let me know because I wanna hear about it. I think it'd be fun to hear. I am exhausted though because today was my first day at the center. Um, man, I have been stuck on someone's arm for at least the last three years. And today I was not, I was um, very lost and turned around, not in any dangerous places whatsoever, but I, I got turned around quite a few times and a lot of asking people, where am I? Where do I need to go? Um, you know, some people know their left from their right and a lot of people don't. And that has been really fun and interesting with almost everybody here is blind. So <laughs> when someone says right and you go right and they're like, no, not that way. You're like, you said right. No, I meant left. So that's been a fun experience. But I have, um, had to live with that because Dan does it to me all the time. He does it so much that I tend to go left when he says go right, and I'm usually correct. Um, but here I don't know because some people do know and they say the correct thing and other people don't. And so it's just really going to be a lot of figuring out uh, who knows their left from their right and who doesn't. Uh, so I am totally exhausted and uh, I'm looking forward to another day. Um, I, I think tomorrow I actually get to get in the kitchen for the first time, and I'm excited about that. Um, I've been in the kitchen a lot. It's not a skill that I'm worried about, but I do wonder, how are blind people supposed to do this? Because I don't think I do everything the way I'm supposed to. I kind of feel like I fumble around a lot, but I get the job done, and it tastes good, and, and I usually don't have shells in there or whatever. Um, I actually had Morgan picking out <laughs> eggshells from some uh, batter that I was making, uh, lemon bars the other day, and she was picking some shells out, and that was kind of fun. I was like, hey, are there any eggshells in here? She's like, uh, yeah, apparently I had dropped a half of an eggshell in there. That was kind of funny, but um, I'm going to get better. They're going to teach me better. They're going to teach me how to really do it uh, blind, and it's going to be a lot of fun and a great experience, and I'm going to come home 
feeling like I can hit the ground running, I can get back to school, I can get back to life before. My sister-in-law, Lacey, she's so wonderful. We were talking about this uh, back in March. And um, I was telling her, you know, there's this program and they do all these amazing things and, and they teach blind people to be totally independent and totally successful and all this stuff. And I was telling her all about the different programs and she goes, wow, you're gonna come back a different person. And I said, no, I'm coming back me. I miss that person, I miss me. I miss the me that I was when I was confident and I could just hit the ground running on anything and everything I wanted to do. I haven't been that person for quite a while and I miss her and I like her. She's kind of cool and I want her back. So I am here to find her and I'm bringing her back home with me and we are gonna have, we're gonna hit the ground running. It's gonna be great. And I thank every one of you for being here and supporting me. And I'm like flailing my arm around all over the place over here. You can probably see it. But um, I'm just super excited to be here and uh, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. I promise it won't be a daily, daily post um, because that's just too much, um, too overwhelming. But I will post um, as often as I can to just keep you guys updated and let you know what's going on. So follow me on this journey. Um, if you're not already following, just click on the button now I see up there and follow me and we'll go on this journey together. Bye. Accessible. Yeah. Um, and often. Invite to go live with button. Comment button. Finish button.